Sonic, the heart of your system. Hi and welcome to a new video on my channel. As you can see, we're not at my place. We're at the University of Berlin. And next to me, we have a TEM, which is a Transmission Electron Microscope. If you remember, like one and a half or two years ago, we were covering a video on my channel where we were taking a closer look at the Core i7 8700. K with a scanning electron microscope. This is a TEM. It's a little bit different. We can uh, reach higher resolutions with this and in today's video we will um, use uh, nowadays TEM because this one is from 1946. This is one of the first ones that was built from Siemens here uh, in Germany. Originally the TEM was founded um, by uh, Ernst Ruska in 1931. And by 1933, they already managed to bypass the performance of a normal microscope. And by 1940, they already had a higher res resolution than 13 nanometers. And this one is from 1946. But yeah, obviously you can guess that performance-wise we would not be able to focus uh, that deep down on the 9900K. That's what we will do today with a nowadays TEM. We are now in the center of electron microscopy and this is a very, very special building. Apart from doing the TEM and SEM analysis, what we will do today, there are more um, different uh, microscopes in this building which we will not take a look at, but uh, they are performing several analyses, for example, looking at uh, steel components or biological components. And uh, to be able to have those analyses and those uh, microscopes in this building and to even take those shots, um, there was a special requirement for this building. Basically, we have two buildings in one. There is this center building right here, which is uh, separated from the outer one. I and mean, you can see there's this uh, gap in between. If we take a look on the right side, we have concrete pillars going into the ground by about 10 meters. And this was required to have a disturbance uh, free environment um, yeah, from the outside. Otherwise, we would have vibrations inside the building, which would simply make it impossible to take those kind of shots with the microscopes. I just gave you a small introduction to the building outside and we are now in the room where the TEM is located to my right or your left. That's the microscope right here and we will get to that in several minutes when we get to analyzing uh, the 9900K. But what is already really impressive is the building itself and the room itself. Just looking at the floor, we, we have some uh, normal uh, carpet on here which you think, why is that unusual? It's because it's a laboratory and you wouldn't usually use a carpet inside a laboratory room. But that's because we have to absorb some of uh, the noise, even if you just speak. You could have standing waves in your room and that's why they specifically had to design this room to avoid any kind of standing waves. Um, just in, in the empty room. For example, we have those absorbers uh, on the wall here and here just to absorb all um, the noise and the waves that could occur just when you talk. And then one more thing that's also really interesting is that, for example, this is the, um, a part of the ventilation and the cooling unit in this room because it has to be a stable temperature. It cannot be 15 degree today and 30 degree tomorrow inside this room. That wouldn't work. So we have ventilation right here, uh, ventilation on this side, and then we have two more um, air vents on the top. And all those four um, air vents and ventilation systems are designed so we have a small vortex or extremely slow tornado in this room right here. And the center of this uh, tornado would be the microscope. And that's where we'd ha we would have the eye of the tornado, where we have zero, um, let's say, airspeed um, or airflow. And the reason for that is that we don't want any uh, like vibrations or unnecessary uh, air going across the microscope all day because that would cause again vibrations and then measurement errors. So the conclusion is that you couldn't just go out there to Amazon and order this for 500,000 or 800,000 euro, what it apparently costs, and put it in your home. It wouldn't help you because uh, you would have so many influences from outside which would completely ruin your measurements. You would have to specifically build a building inside another building and then have all those things inside here like the carpet, special air ventilation systems um, and all those things just to be able to have accurate measurements. 
With the TM we will be able to take a look at the structure on a transistor level and to be able to take a look at those uh, structures there is a lot of preparation needed first before we get to that um, this is a 9900k you can see it's cut in half for preparation from my side i had to remove the chiplet itself from the pcb once we did that we can put one of the chips on such a holder then we can take a look at a normal microscope. Now you can see the CPU structure from the top, but if we use the SEM and TEM, we will take a look from, uh, at the structure from the side. Now we can see the i9-9900K from the side. This is the cut we performed. This is the PCB, which you can see right here. We can see some capacitors on the bottom, which we also cut in half. What you can see on top is the silicon. We see some joints in between some solder balls and uh, what you cannot really see is the structure itself where we have the circuits on the CPU. That's probably what would be this very thin line right here but even on a microscope like this this is not really visible and that's why we have to move to an SEM or to a TEM. Now we zoomed in even more on this cross-section view about 30 times magnified Something I want to highlight once again is that in the silicon right here we don't have any circuits. It's just on top right here. That's why it's a flip chip. In production it's flipped around and um, we have the circuit on top which you can see is connected to the PCB right here. One step further you can see the backside of the Core i9-9900K. Those small solder bumps are the connection between the chiplet itself and the PCB. In the corner of the chip right here you can see some yeah, pieces of the top side um, yeah, kind of ripped off um, from the chip lad and we will take a closer look at this cross section um, under the SEM in a minute. We are now standing next to the scanning electron microscope and you can see in my hand I'm holding the um, Core i9-9900K which is already placed on this small holder and um, it's also very important that it's electrically also connected to the CPU so we have this small stripe of copper tape on here. Depending on what kind of sample you're going to analyze um, it might be necessary that you're coating it uh, with a different metal to make it electrically conductive and once it's prepared the sample is placed inside this load lock, will be closed and then it will be moved inside the SEM and inside the SEM we have a vacuum which is um, extremely important. Uh, if there would be any kind of molecules inside, even if it's just air, dust, it would be in conflict with the electron beam which is coming from the top of the SEM and any molecules that would be inside would simply disturb this electron beam. Now we don't have a vacuum inside, that's why we can open the SEM for now. Take a close look inside on this table right here the sample will be placed and it can rotate and move in any kind of direction so we can um, yeah, take a look at it and also work with the sample in any direction. This image shows the top side of the 9900K. Again we can see the solder bumps which we just saw under the normal microscope. Underneath we can see a little bit of the structure but the real structure inside the chip is still not visible. To make this structure visible we will have to cut a small fin, a small lamella with a focused iron beam, uh, iron beam out of uh, this material. And this picture is taken with an SEM with a scanning electron microscope, which is basically using an electron beam across the material to show this image. The particular SEM we are using here has not only an electron beam which comes from the top, which goes onto the sample to show a vis visible image. It also has a focused iron beam going from the left side and that's the one we need to cut out the small fin or lamella out of the silicon. And now the specimen is inside of the SEM and you can see, uh, still see the surface with the solder bumps and this uh, below here uh, this is a silicon wafer and on top of the uh, silicon wafer we have these um, semiconductor structures that we want to uh, investigate later in the TM.